Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about summation and sigma notation. And so consider the scenario where you want to add six numbers together. Let's say you want to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, right? What would that be equal to? Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus another 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21. And so that was easy enough to calculate, but as we would begin to add more and more numbers, this would take a while to write out because we'd have to keep adding more and more terms. So for example, if we wanted to add the numbers from 1 through 100, it would take a while to write all those values out and add them together. And so this is where the idea of sigma notation comes into play. We have an easier way to represent the sum of a series of terms. And so for this specific scenario where we added the numbers from one to six, the sum of those numbers using sigma notation would look like this. We have our Greek letter sigma, and then we have an upper bound of six. We're gonna be starting at one, so i equals one, and we have this letter i right here. And so what this notation means is that for values of i starting at one and counting up to six, we want to sum together those terms, right? So think of this letter, this sigma, as meaning the sum of the values for i from this value of i to this value, right? So we're looking at one through six and we're gonna be adding them together. And so this would be the same calculation as this calculation. This would be equal to one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, and that would still be equal to 21. And so for this notation, there's a few different things you wanna make note of. For one, this top value we call the upper bound of the summation. It means it will be the last value of i that you will be adding in your series of terms. And then your bottom value here, this i equals one, this one represents where we're starting, the first value of i, and then we call this whole part down here the index of the summation. It tells us what letter we're working with, which is the letter i in this case. And so if we use this sigma notation, we could actually write this sum right here a different way as well. So look at this. We could write this as the sum from i equals zero to five of i plus one. And so if we wanted to calculate this, what we would do is we would start with i equals zero and plug it into what we're summing, right? We are taking the sum of i plus one starting from zero and ending with five. And so if we start with our first value of i, we'll have zero plus one, right? We plugged zero in for i, added one, and that's it. And now if we wanna move on to i equals one, right? We're gonna be moving up to five, but the next value would be one. We're going to add, one plus one, right? We plugged one in for i, added one, and that's our next term that we are summing here. And then we would do that for i equals two, so we'd have plus two plus one, and then we'd do it for three, we'd have plus three plus one, and then we do it for four and five. So plus four plus one plus five plus one. And so now if we were to simplify, this would be equal to one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six right, we would have the same thing that we have up here. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, and that's still going to be equal to 21. And so now you can see how this sigma notation is used to find the sum of a series of terms. And they can get a lot more complicated by changing what happens to i. But before we look at more examples of solving summations or finding the answers of a sum using this sigma notation, Let's talk about some of the rules or the properties of this notation. And so our first rule is that let's say we had the sum from i equals one to six of three times i. Well, we would be able to pull out this constant to the outside of this notation. And so we would rewrite this to be three times the summation from i equals one to six of i, right? We just pulled this three to the outside of the summation. And so now we can multiply this three by what the value of this summation is. And so previously, if we were to write out the terms, this would have been equal to three times one plus three times two plus three times three plus three times four plus three times five plus three times six. But now it's a little bit simpler because now that we pulled out that three, this is just going to be equal to three times one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six right? These two values are going to be equal because you could pull a three out of each of these terms and be left with this, which is exactly what's going on here. 
we're just pulling this 3 to the outside of the sum so that it is easier to calculate. And so we already calculated that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 21. And so in either case, it would be equal to 3 times 21, which is equal to 63. And so just keep in mind that when you're working with sums, you are able to pull out any constant that is multiplied by your term i. And then our other property for summations is that let's say we had the sum from i equals 1 to 6 of i plus i squared. Our property is that we can split this up into two separate sums. This will be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to 6 of i plus the sum from i equals 1 to 6 of i squared, right? We took each of these parts in this quantity and split our sum up so we have the sum for this term plus the sum for this term with the same bounds from 1 to 6. And that's going to make it easier for us to find the sum of these terms. And so previously this would have been equal to 1 plus 1 squared plus 2 plus 2 squared and then we would have added up all the way to 6 plus 6 squared. But now we have two separate sums and so this would be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and then it's going to be added to 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared. And so these two sums are going to be the same because it doesn't matter what order you add things in. And so in either case this would be equal to 21 plus 91 and that would be equal to 112, right? This is equal to 21 and this is equal to 91 and together they equal 112. And so being able to split up a quantity like this into two separate sums is going to be very helpful when you're working with sigma notation and you're trying to find the sum of some terms. And then also note that this also applies when you are subtracting terms, right? So if we had i minus i squared instead, we could have split that up into two sums of this sum minus this sum. And so this works for both addition and subtraction. All right, so now that we have covered the different properties of sigma notation and summations in general, it's time to look at some summation formulas that are going to be helpful so we don't have to go through and write out all of these terms. We actually have a way to make this a lot faster. And so let's take a look at that next. And so here's our first formula. We're gonna have four of them in total, but our first one here is in regards to the sum of a constant that's not going to change. So for example, if we had the sum from i equals one to four of three, right? This would be an example of this. And this rule says that if you have the sum of some constant from one to n, it's going to be equal to that constant times n. And so this would be equal to three times four which is equal to 12, right? Three is our equivalent to C, and four is our value of N, and so three times four would be equal to 12. And just so you can see that this works, normally if we wanted to find the sum from one to four of three, this means that we're just adding three to itself four times, right? So for I equals one, our term is three, then for I equals two, our term is three, and for i equals three, it's three, and for i equals four, it is three, because there's no i in this term. So this term isn't changing, it is just equal to three plus three plus three plus three, which is equal to 12. And so it's much faster to use this formula and just multiply three by that upper bound of four to get 12, all right? So that's our first summation formula. And so now for our second summation formula, we have that if we have the sum from i equals one to some upper bound n, of i, it's equal to n times the quantity n plus one divided by two. And so if we look at that sum that we've been looking at since the beginning of the video, where we have the sum from i equals one to six of i, right? That was just the numbers one through six being added together. We said that that was equal to 21. And so let's see if we get the same thing when we use this formula. Our upper bound n is six. And so we'll plug that into this formula and we'll have that this sum will be equal to six times six plus one divided by two. Well, that will be equal to six times seven divided by two, which is equal to 42 divided by two. And 42 divided by two is equal to 21. And so look at that. We got the same answer with this formula that we got when we just added the terms together normally. And so this is going to save us a lot of time when we start adding a lot of numbers together, right? If we wanted to add the numbers from i equals one to 100, 
That would take a long time to do by individually adding each number together, but we could just use that formula and say that this is equal to 100 times 100 plus one divided by two. And so that would be equal to 100 times 101 divided by two, which would be equal to 10,100 divided by two, and that would be equal to 5,050. And so you can see how useful this summation formula is. We found the sum of the numbers from one to 100 a lot faster than you probably could otherwise. And so this is our second summation formula. And so then for our third summation formula, we have the summation from i equals one to n of i squared. So the last one we looked at was i to the first power, right? It was just i. This time we're looking at i squared. And that's gonna be equal to n times the quantity n plus one times the quantity two times n plus one divided by six. And so this one's slightly more complicated than our previous one. But if we wanted to calculate the sum from i equals one to four of i squared, that would be equal to taking our upper bound four, which is n, and plugging it into this formula. So we'll have four times four plus one times two times four plus one divided by six. And so if we simplify that, this would be equal to four times five times two times four is eight plus one, so that would be nine, and then divided by six, and so that would be equal to four times five, which is 20, times nine, which is 180, and then that will be divided by six, and that would be equal to 30. And so just to check to see if this formula worked, let's say we wanted to add those terms individually, this would also be equal to one squared, plus two squared, plus three squared, plus four squared. Right, we started at i equals one, plugged it into i squared to get one squared, then we moved on to i equals two, so we have two squared, and then we moved on to three and four, and had those terms squared. And so if we add these together, we'll have that this is equal to one plus four plus nine plus 16, and that is equal to one plus four, which is five, plus nine, which is 14, plus 16 is equal to 30. And so in either case, we're going to get the same answer, but of course, this formula is gonna be way more helpful when we were adding a lot more terms together and not just four of them like we were in this case. And so this is our third summation formula. Let's look at our last one next. And so here's our fourth and final summation formula that we're going to look at in this video. And that is when we have the sum from i equals one to n of i cubed, it's equal to this, right? We looked at the sum when i was to the first power, and then we just looked at the sum when i was squared. Now we're looking at the sum when i is cubed. And so that's equal to n squared times n plus one squared divided by four. And so in this case, let's say we want to sum the values from i equals one to three of i cubed. That would be equal to our upper bound three, which is equal to n, plugged into this formula. So we'll have three squared, times three plus one squared divided by four. And if we simplify, that will be equal to nine times four squared, right? Three plus one squared would be four squared. So we'll have nine times 16 divided by four. And so 16 divided by four is four. And so this would be equal to nine times four, which would be equal to 36. And so that would be the answer to that sum. And so once again, just so you can see that this formula does work, that it does get the correct answer. If we were to do this individually for each term, we would have one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed, right? We started at one and we're going to three and we're cubing each of those terms. And so this would be equal to one plus eight plus 27, right? Two cubed is eight and three cubed is 27. And so that would be equal to one plus eight, which is nine plus 27, which is equal to 36. And so once again, we found the same answer that we got using this summation formula. And so those are all the summation formulas that you're going to want to know. Unfortunately, they do involve a little bit of memorization. There's really no way around that. So try your best to try to learn those formulas as you go through various examples. In fact, I believe that is the best way to learn the formulas is just to continue to do examples. And as you use the formulas more and more, you will begin to remember them and be able to solve these sums a lot quicker. And so if you wanna see some example problems where we need to use these formulas to calculate some sums, feel free to check out our examples video after you finish watching this lesson video. There will be plenty of examples for you to see these formulas in action. But before you go there, there's one more thing that you need to see regarding summations and sigma notation that is going to be very important for you to know. So you might've noticed so far that when we've been working with these summations, specifically with those formulas, 
that whenever we had a sum, it began with i equals one and went to some other value. Let's just say for this example, we're going to five. Well, what if we had the sum of let's say i squared, except we didn't start at i equals one. What if we started at a different value? Let's say instead of starting at one, we started at three. Now, how do we find the sum using our formulas? Because we could certainly do this by hand, right? This isn't too hard to do each term individually. In fact, it would be equal to three squared plus four squared plus five squared, right? We're starting at i equals three. So we plug three into i squared to get three squared. And then we do four and five. And so this would just be equal to nine plus 16 plus 25. And that would be equal to 50. But what if we had more terms? This would get a lot more complicated to do. And so let's take a look at something. Imagine that we weren't starting at three and just imagine that we did start at one. We would have one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared plus five squared. And so notice what is similar between our calculation here and what I just wrote down. This has the same terms starting with three, but doesn't have one squared or two squared. And so what we could do here is we could actually take the sum from one to five for this summation and then subtract out the sum from one to two, right? If we're just summing from one to two, we would have these two values. And so if we sum all of these terms and then subtract those two out, we'd just be left with these terms, which are right here. And so let me show you what I mean. Let's say instead that if we wanted to find the sum from i equals three to five of i squared, right? That's the same sum that we have up here. This would be equal to finding the sum from i equals one to five of i squared minus the sum from i equals one to two of i squared, right? So here we're finding all of these terms added together, one squared plus two squared, all the way through five squared. And then for this sum, we're just looking at the sum from one to two, which would be these terms. So for this, we have all of these terms and then we're subtracting these two terms. And so this will be equal to this sum right here. And so then if we use our formula that the sum from i equals one to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six. We can then use this for each of these sums. So this would be equal to five times five plus one times two times five plus one divided by six minus two times two plus one times two times two plus one divided by six. And so if we clean up our work here a little bit, this would be equal to five times six times two times five, which is 10 plus one, which would be 11 divided by six minus two times three times two times two, which is four plus one. So we'd have five divided by six. And so then we can simplify this one more time and notice that this six and this six will cancel out. And then for this term, two times three is equal to six. So this six and this six will cancel. And so we just have five times 11 minus five, which is equal to 55 minus five, which is equal to 50. And so that would be the answer to this sum. Now we found that up here earlier a lot faster because we're only summing three terms, but imagine how much nicer this will be to use when we're summing a lot more terms. Let's say we started at three and went to 50 or a hundred this would be a lot easier to do than to do them individually like we started with. And so that's how you would calculate the sum if it doesn't start at i equals one. You might come across that as you practice more and more of these problems. And so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.